Stars, my first let's play in English. Um, I'm pretty nervous because it's the first time I'm doing this in English. <laughs> English is not the best language I could speak, um, but I decided to do this let's play in English because uh, the text is also in English and my my translation skills are not so good, I could translate it in a proper German in a short time. So I'm going to play this on English and I hope you will understand everything I uh, say and I hope you um, can look over some mistakes I'm going to do because my English is really not the best. Okay. Um, Long speed short, I click on the button start. We played already uh, another game from Urto a long time ago. It's A Hand in the Darkness. This is the second game, I think, from Urto. It's Chasing the Stars and it contains Boys Love. So when you're against Boys Love or you have your problems with it, then please leave now. So. Um, Okay, I think that's all I have to say at the beginning, so we can start. I, I'm going to click on start, so let's begin. Ah, this game features some other situations between two men. Every time one of the scenes is going to happen, you will have the option of skipping the scene. We will not skip it. Alternatively, you can decide now if you prefer to enable or disable all the added scenes without being asked anymore. Enjoy. Oh yeah, we enjoyed. Show me all the sexy scenes. I prefer to see only kisses and light stuff. Let me choose scene by scene. I don't want to see any kind of other content. Thanks. Okay. Um, I will click uh, show me all the sexy scenes, of course. Um, when you see some... Yeah. Um, how could I say it? Um, when you see some penis, <laughs> I have to say it in this way, I will... Of course, um, edit it so you can't see it because I have to upload it on YouTube and then it's, yeah, you, you know the way. So, show me all the sexy scenes. If I had to choose a favorite place in my town, I think this would be it. The cafeteria of my university. It's located at the top of the building, so the view from the picture windows is astounding. As you can imagine, my friends and I spend a good amount of time hanging out here. It's... My space for so days, you could say. Except for today. Today, it's the backdrop to my worst nightmare. What do you mean you're leaving me? No, my boyfriend since high school is breaking up with me. I'm really, really sorry, Tears, but... Um... This isn't going in the right direction. How come? We've been together for six years. Last year, I even... I know, I know, okay? Don't remind me again. Look. Oh, sorry. <laughs> uh, I, I, I'm overwhelmed that we have um, voices in here. That's awesome. Uh, Nil is a poet and a songwriter and the sweetest guy ever, but ironic 
Ironically, it seems he can't find any suitable words to say goodbye to me. Has he, has he ever loved me? I can't understand a single thing right now. Please leave me alone. Now stands up from our table and looks down at me with concern. Whenever you need a friend, please call me. Okay? <sighs> I skip my afternoon class and instead stay in the cafeteria to immerse in my self pity to care about lessons. Look what the cat dragged in. <laughs> What's with that face anyway? Okay, I have to turn the voice volume a bit a little bit. Okay, I'm very sorry, but she's not so beautiful. He is awesome in the way he is uh, he's drawn, but she? Okay, we go on with the uh, text. An hour later, the seventh cavalry comes to my rescue in the form of my best friends. Paul and Lila share the same major authority, so they arrive simultaneously, joining me at my table after the class together. As I sit down, I explain what's happened. My friends share a pointed look and then Lila shrugs. I think a night out is in order. What about the night spy club? We still haven't been there and I've heard it's great. To my other surprise, Paul just hums in agreement. Hold on. Have you guys been listening? Why are you surprised? Another shared look in which they apparently decide that it's Paul's turn to respond. Seeing someone else? I, I speak German, Dylan. Okay. Ignore it. <laughs> I am so furious that I can't hardly speak. I highly doubt it. Yeah, it's not that. But we saw it coming, alright? But but you never said a thing. What did I do wrong? Paul sides and rubs my shoulder. How about we leave that conversation for later? I agree with Lilla. A night out clubbing is exactly what you need right now. We can talk when you've relaxed a bit, okay? Okay, she called Lilla. I shrug confused if Paul says so. We grab a bite at a street stall and then Lilla and Paul drag me along to the new club. It's elegant, perhaps too much so for my taste, and the music isn't bad, but I'm not really in, in the mood. I gulp down a beer and then chase it with some shorts of whiskey. Around us, everybody seems excessively happy, shuddering loudly with what now looks to me like big fake smiles. I try to dance for a little while, promoted by Lilla, but soon I give up and rest my elbow on the countertop. I watch the people come, come and go as they drink and flirt and choke around. I'm suffocating here. I push my way through the crowd in the main door. I need air. Once outside, I slump on the ground close to the club door and rest my back against the wall. I'm in a side alley next to a busy main street. Every car that passes sends a flash of light every over my dark corner. People come and go. I calculate it must be around midnight already. I look up at the sky. The stars seem to be laughing at me tonight. So cold, so far away, distant, remote, yonder. While I'm stuck here on this piece of rock and water we call home Earth. While I chuckle with regret, I notice a silhouette sliding down by my side. I don't even need to turn my face to know it's Poe. Good old Poe. We've been friends since high school. Has it been five years already? Yeah, could be. He passes me a bottle of beer without a word. I take it and have a good gulp. When I finally turn my face to him, he's looking at me with fondness. I'm fine, before you ask. <laughs> like hell you are. Hey, let me pretend, will you? I'm not that drunk yet, but I'll get there. I look up at the sky again and I feel Paul getting comfortable by my side and shining me in my stargazing. What a clear night. Yeah. I remember all those nights in your bedroom when you forced me to learn the name of all the stars that were visible through your telescope. I laughed a bit at this. <laughs> Do you still remember them? Hmm, some, yes. 
We stay like that for a few minutes, watching the night firmament in the silence. But at least I decided to break the peace and finally ask. I sat before speaking. So tell me, why did you all know that Nil and I were going to break up? Paul shifts his sitting position uncomfortable. Well, it was clear as day that you always put your career first. It was just a matter of time until one of the two of you decided to end the relationship. What? That's not true. You know very well that last year I even turned down the best opportunity I'll ever have in my career. And it was for Nil's sake. If I'd accepted Dr. Russell's scholarship, my chances of going into space would have multiplied by a thousand. I would have gotten to work with him in the dome in the main city of LA. Can you believe it? The first planet ever terraformed and colonized by humankind. And I would have been a part of that. Man, I feel so dumb right now. If I'd known that Neil would end up dumping me, I'd have rushed to accept. Can you imagine how different my life would be? I'd finish my major this year, and then I'd travel to Alea itself to work in the terraforming project in C2. That's my fucking dream. Even before Alea was discovered. Paul sides. It makes him feel a bit annoyed. What? And how many times have you said those same words to Nilo this last year? Because I can tell you, Lilla and I have heard your regrets to death. It's no use to give up on a chance if you're going to think about it every single day of your life. Worst of all, making your boyfriend feel guilty for forcing you to say no to that chance. I mumbled something, trying to deny it, but a part of me knows he's right. It's true that our relationship turned somewhat bitter after I turned down the scholarship. So, Nil knew almost from the start, in fact, that your relationship had an expiration date. He knew, same as Lilla and me, that your dream has always been to leave Earth and travel into space. Space. It doesn't really matter if it's with Dr. Rose's expedition or with another project. We all know you're not going to stay here for long. Especially not now that we finally have a new planet that's suitable for terraforming and colonization. If you can't go to Alaya, you'll end up living in a satellite city in space for sure. Any place but here on Earth, am I wrong? I shake my head, regretful. I've been a terrible boyfriend. Memories flash through my mind, snips of conversation. Nils said expressions in silence after something that wasn't exactly an argument. He never really argued with me. Why bother? If you already knew it was futile to try to reason with me. As Paul has pointed out, I decided my life path many years ago when I was a child. Even so, I always thought Nil would come with me to Alaya or wherever we finally went. How blind I have been. Poor Nil was absolutely spending his time with me all these years. Hey, say something. Are you alright? Stop asking me that. What's on your mind then? Are you going to ask Nil to come back? I feel a lump in my throat as I think of Nil's smiling face. I shake my head and I shake my head with sadness. No, you're right. I have given him more pain than joy this last year. I think it's better for him if I leave him alone. He's he's great, gorgeous, generous, cheerful, and sweet, and so cute. I'm sure we find someone more deserving for him in no time. Crap! I can't stand the idea of seeing him around with another guy. A burning pain pierces through my chest. I rub the place with my palm. A hand squeezes my shoulder. Are you truly ready to let him go? No, but I will. I'm a hundred percent decided. That's brave of you, and determined. What are you going to do then? Hmm? I mean, are you going to talk with Dr. Rosal about the possibility of getting that scholarship again? A bitter laugh that sounds more like a bark escapes through my lips. <laughs> are you out of your mind? There's no way in hell he would accept me back onto this project. You won't know unless you ask. Paul, come on. You should have seen his disappointed face when I told him I wasn't accepting his scholarship. I bet he surely thinks of me as a vain, changeable and unreliable a person who acts on a whim. He'll never consider me a solid option now. Why not? Your grades are the top of your, of your class. Excuse me, they are the top ones, not just at the top. See? Then I'm sure he still thinks you are the best option for his project. Oh, you don't understand at all how this works. If you had me met Dr. Rosal, you wouldn't suggest it. I can assure you. But I'll give it some thought, okay? Right, you don't have anything to lose by asking. That's quite true. Since I've lost a person, I've always thought of the love of my life. I should at least really focus on my career now. 
Let's not lose him for no reason at least. I wonder what Nil is doing right now. Is he drinking with his friends too, trying to chase away the sadness? Or is he alone at home, thinking about me, about our happy shared moments? I seriously contemplate the idea of phoning him right now. Are you feeling any better? Hmm. Your eyes are glazed. I take his beer and gulp down the remaining liquid. It's lukewarm. That means I need more alcohol. Sure, let's go inside and search for Lilla, unless... Hmm? Any other options? He looks away with a soft blush on his cheeks. We could go to another place. That gay bar you used to go to isn't far from here. I shake my head with a chuckle. <laughs> I don't think a hookup is what I need right now, Paul. But it would take your mind off. Everything I don't like, the idea of letting you go back home feeling like crap and drunk texting nil. I rub my temple, temples upset. Is Paul reading my mind or what? Because I'm texting or phoning nil is exactly what I was thinking about a moment ago. I start considering his suggestion. But won't you feel awkward in a gay bar, Paul? Nah, don't worry. It's a bar after all, right? I can have a beer there without a problem. Um, um, of course we go to the gay bar. Let's go to the gay bar. <laughs> As I step in this familiar place with Paul in town, I wonder what the hell I'm doing here. The music is too loud and I have to push past a lot of sweaty bodies to reach the bar counter. So this is where you usually come with your gay friends and not full of uneasiness. In fact, they're more acquaintance, acquaintances than friends. People I used to hang out with sometimes, especially back when I was still in high school. They are fun, but I always feel too serious and responsible when I'm with them, and I don't like to be a party pooper. So I've distanced myself from them. I usually prefer spending my time with Nil or hanging out with Paul and Lilla. I really hope I won't meet Nil here. I look around with panic. Paul pushes a rum and cola in my direction. Here, drink. Stop searching the bar with that face, please. Oh, sorry. I sip my drink. There's no trace of nil of any familiar face, to be honest. So perhaps my old friends have moved to another bar. The other option, less likely of course, is that they have finally grown up and now avoid going out on weekdays. By the end of my drink, I started to relax. Paul replaces my glass with a new one before he can ask. Later, I lose count of how many rum and colas I drank and how many people I've danced with. There's currently a hand on my waist and when I look up, a pair of beautiful black eyes matched that hand. It doesn't seem like Paul is by my side anymore, but I didn't notice when he left. The guy I'm dancing with pushes me gently to the private booth. We sit on the familiar red couches. I've been here more than once with Nil in the past. Nil. So my name is... I kiss him before he has the chance to finish the sentence. I don't want to know his name. I close my eyes at once and let the alcohol in my blood take the reins. The guy kisses me back with fever. He divorced me with hungry wet kisses. I enjoy it with my mind blank all of it, his hand slipping inside my shirt and running over my chest, his pierced tongue playing with mine. I reach for his hair and a sob escapes through my lips when I find it too short, not like the long bangs I'm used to caressing. I move back on the couch, refusing to open my eyes. What's wrong? I stand up, balancing myself against the wall. Sorry, I'm really sorry, but I have to leave now. I'm so stupid. I can't even blame alcohol, no matter how drunk I am right now. I knew perfectly well what I was doing. You sure? That's a pity, dude. Can you give me your number? Or we could meet here tomorrow if you want. I shake my head in refusal. I look at him at last. He really has beautiful eyes, but he is not new. I'm sorry. There's no nothing else I can say to him. I feel like crap, so I'm not able to give him any other excuse. I stagger towards the exit and reach the street. The night air cools my mind a bit, luckily. I know Poe had the best of intentions when he suggested coming here, but this is not what I need. It felt so wrong kissing someone who wasn't ill. I don't think I'll be ready for that for a while. Meanwhile, I check the time on my memory bracelet. It's only one o'clock. If I go home now, I could have a coffee to sober up and work on my project for a couple of hours. I don't have class until 8.30 tomorrow, so as long as I sleep around 4 hours, I will be able to function. My alcohol-clocked mind decided that it's a fantastic idea, so I start walking back home. The hours rapidly go by while I research for my project. I'm on my fourth and last year of environmental engineering. I chose this major because I thought it was the best option for fulfilling my dream, living and working in space. I've always felt attracted to the stars, but as a kid, I was just one of the million normal children who daydreamed about becoming an astronaut. 
Then the first satellite city launched when I was 11 and my whole world turned upside down. My childish dream became an obsession. Living in space, space wasn't a foolish idea anymore, but an atten attainable one. However, not everybody was able to travel to the satellite city. That first prototype and the ones that followed were populated by engineers, specialized in all the things the new environments needed. As a result, my university major was decided early on. And then, five years ago, while I was taking my entrance exam, the scientific community dropped the bomb. They had discovered a planet that could be terraformed to have suitable conditions for human life, thanks to the new technologies tasted at the satellite cities were supplied. I spent these last five years researching and keeping all the data about Alaya. My dream came true. I must admit that right now I'm mourning the loss of the scholarship with Dr. Rosa more than the loss of Nil. I am a horrible human being. But the fact is that Paul is right. I've been trying to acclimate to the idea of staying on Earth forever, with Nil by my side and working on Alaya's new technology from here. And it's only made me feel bitter all the time. Nil is a great person and I love him, but he has always been second in my heart when compared to Alaya. Damn, I feel like crap. I should phone Nil and apologize. He deserves it. But right now, all I can think about is how I can turn back the clock and get my life back on track. I'm on my way now, so there's nothing in the way between my dream and me. I, I open a chat window. I don't really expect that he will get my call, but surprisingly, the window lights up and a Paul's blurry eyes stare at me through the screen. Hey, Paul. Are you up? Uh, what the hell, Tears? Uh, what... What time is it? Huh? I don't know. Uh, it's a quarter past five. Paul, are you awake? Tears, it's fucking dark outside. What? What the hell are you doing still at your computer? I couldn't sleep, so I worked for a while instead. I've also been thinking. Look, that's great and everything, but I have class in the morning. In around four hours, in fact. I just wanted to let you know I've decided to follow your advice and ask Dr. Russell for another chance. I'll go to his office tomorrow and try my luck with him. Oh? That's fantastic. Oh, how good you made up your mind. <laughs> I chuckle. His eyelids are dropping as he speaks. Thank you again for your support, Paul. I don't know what I'd do without you. Wake up someone else, I guess. <laughs> All right. right. Go oh. back to sleep. Sorry. <laughs> the image turns back without a single see you later from him. I chuckle again in a good mood. <laughs> I decided perhaps it's time for me to go to bed as well, if I want to sleep at least a couple of hours before class. When I step into the cafeteria the next morning and see Lilla and Paul in our usual spot, I feel less certain than I did the night before. Oh look, if it's in my alarm clock. Good morning, I guess. Oh, not so loud. Not so loud. I have a migraine. And who thought is that? Tears, do you know? This party animal here met some friends at the night spy and completely forgot about it being a weekday, it seems. I didn't go back home at that late, but I skipped my first class so I could sleep a bit more. Then stop complaining. He practically yells directly into his skull. Lilla covers her ears, flinching and I can't help but laugh at them. I sit down with my lunch, Lilla sobs into her latte and mutters about hateful friends. Paul leaves her alone. Sorry for waking you up. I was really excited and I needed to speak to someone. Paul shrugs with a smile. Uh, don't sweat it. What about now? Are you still as excited about the prospect of talking to your teacher? I frown. Well, I'm kind of having second thoughts. Chickening out so soon? No way. Finish your meal and go to his office. He'll probably kick me out as soon as he sees my face. Well, you won't know until you try. Do you need me to go with you or what? Am I a toddler now? Okay, fine. I call you later to tell you how it goes. Should I get tissues ready for you? A shudder runs down my spine. Probably. And a rum bottle, please. But no more clubbing tonight. Barely half an hour later, I knock on Dr. Rose's door, feeling uneasy. Come in. I push the door slightly open and peek inside. If he's too busy or make an angry face, I will beg his pardon and retreat. Instead, he raises an eyebrow. And you are? Tears Avril. I'm a fourth year in environmental engineering. Last year you taught me containment engineering and... Ah, yes. 
Now I remember. You are the brat whom I offered a post in my team and had the gall to refuse it. I swallow nervously. Perhaps I should leave this office now. Sit down, please. It would make me speak looking up to you, or my neck will resent it. I do as asked. I try to keep a self-confident attitude and sit accordingly. His desk, even when he is obviously busy, is totally tidy and spotless. So, please tell me, to what do I owe the pleasure of your visit? You are not my people this term. I keep my polite smile plastered on my face, but I covertly wipe my sweaty palms on my trousers. After all, Dr. Rothert is the department head of the environmental engineering department, and he is a prominent figure in our field. It's not surprising he's in charge of designing the dome that will cover the inhabit part of a liar. I better not fuck this up. I wanted to know if perhaps there's still a place for me in your team, sir. Oh, that's interesting. So, you've changed your mind, hmm? Correct me if I'm wrong, but didn't you turn down my offer? Because you decided staying on Earth with your sweetheart was more important than a career in terraforming. How... How the heck does he know? I never told him about that. Have people been gossiping behind my back? I tried to compose my face and answer, but he cuts me off before I can let out a single word. You decided on your priorities last year, and I respect that. So don't come here changing them again. This career is tough, boy. And this project specifically needs enthusiastic people. Professionals who put the work before any other thing. We will have the lives of millions of people in our hands. We can't afford the luxury of choosing our families, our partners, or our friends before work. That's for a different kind of people. Got it? Then, please, leave and close the door behind you. Don't waste my time anymore. I stay here in silence, dumbfounded, and fist my hands in anger and confusion. I'm ready to put my career before anything else. And my grades are the best in my class. Good for you. I'm sure in the future you'll be the chief engineer of some waste management plan, or you can even end up working in a satellite city. You have a brilliant career ahead of you. Just not with me. His voice turns suddenly icy and remaining pointless politeness gun. So now, if you please, off you go. Unless you want me to call security. There's no hesitation or space for an answer in his tone. I get up, feeling defeated and angry with myself. If only I hadn't wasted my chance last year. The opportunity is now lost. Okay. Um, we can now choose between leave the office or don't leave the office. Um, on first thought, I would choose don't leave the office because you want to see someone who puts um, his job before anything else and who is enthusiastic. En en enthusiastic? I don't think it's called like that. Uh, it's pronounced like that. Um, nevertheless, um, I would just choose don't leave the office because if you want to see that we are um, that we change our minds and want to go to a liar, so don't leave the office. I walk two steps towards the door, but then I stop to f and face Dr. Rosal again. No. He blinks twice. No. No. It was difficult for me to come see you again and beg you for another chance. So I'm not leaving until I've got it. He chuckles and shakes his head in disbelief, but he doesn't make a move towards the security button. Working in space has always been my dream. Even before they discovered Alea. So just tell me what I need to do and I'll do it. Do you want me to beg on my knees? I can do that. Do you want me to grade your people's work? I'll do that as well. I'll bring you coffee, do your errands, and whatever else you ask from me. Oh. So you're basically offering to be my slave, hmm? Yes! Because in the end, you'll have the best project assistant you've ever dreamt of having. Hmm. You praise yourself a lot, I see. Because I know I can do a great job here. Give me a position, and you'll never regret it. He leans back in his chair, and at first it se he seems amused by my tirade. Now he's deep in thought. He taps his fingers on the pristine surface on his table. I hold my breath. Although your offer of being my slave is pretty appealing, I think it would be more suitable to give you a test task. He signals my memory bracelet. I raise my forearm and put my wrist close to his computer. I'm transferring some data to you. This is something we've been recently working on. Calculating the density of the material which will be used in the dome. 
If you are able to find a reasonable outcome by, let's say, tomorrow at the same time, I'll give you another chance. You... you give me the scholarship? I still can't believe my ears. The sly spy he's offering me doesn't make me trust too much, to be honest. He seems to be having too much fun with me. Well, we'll see. It's up to you now. He shrugs and turns his attention towards his computer again. I get up, feeling a bit awkward, and slightly bow my head. Thank you for this opportunity, sir. I'll do my best. You won't regret it. He mumbles without even looking at me, already typing. Stop calling me sir, for a start. For God's sake. Sure, uh, professor. He sighs and I scurry out of the office before he decides to change his mind. That evening, though, it's already dark outside, so that means I've been working on a calculation for a good number of hours. Frustrated, I ping po. It's not that late, so he's probably studying too. Hi, how are those numbers going? I called him earlier to let him know the, new the news, very excited by the prospect. All my excitement has vanished by now, unfortunately. They're simply not going anywhere. How come? What's the problem? The problem is, Dr. Rosa was only mocking me by offering me this chance. I lack a good amount of relevant data. Without that, I can't accomplish the task. It's impossible. Oh. I should have known better. Of course he wouldn't give me another chance. What was I thinking? He just wanted to mock me. I bet he's looking forward to seeing me tomorrow in his office and laughing at my face. Man, I feel so hopeless, so frustrated. So, what are you going to do? There's nothing else to do. This is the end. Are you giving up then? Uh, hello. I, I already want to speak German. Um, <laughs> no. Of course no. When we now give up, the professor sees that we are not... Um, um, that we don't really want to go to a lawyer. So... No. We don't give up. 